since 2003. This is the Sports Source. East Tennessee's number one sports talk show. Presented by Hyperwrench and by Junk Be Gone and by the Garza Law Firm. With your host, John Pennington. The Sports Source starts now. Good Sunday morning. Happy New Year's Eve to you. We welcome you to the Junk Be Gone studio for today's edition of the Sports Source. One last chance in 2023 to get spiffy or silly, if you want to say it. Uh, have a little fun. That's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to break down the uh, Citrus Bowl game for you tomorrow. Uh, it's going to be a full and thorough, as full and as thorough rundown as you're going to get anywhere. We're going to cover it top to bottom, left to right, all the way around. As a matter of fact, let's just go ahead and show you how we're going to cover this bowl game. These are our resolutions for today. First of all, it is Nico time in Tennessee. We're going to talk about who's in, who's out for the game. Some absolutely stunning, incredible stats that will blow your mind. Vol Citrus Bowl history, a little trip down memory lane for those of you who want some nostalgia. Offense versus defense matchups, game plan, keys and intangibles, and our predictions versus the spread and the over-under. Boy, that spread continues to move. This first segment of our show today, brought to you by our friends at the Garza Law Firm. Marcos Garza and his whole team, along with the Fish Hospitality Pantry, want to thank you for taking part in their Christmas card drive this year. You helped raise a new record amount of money to help end hunger right here in East Tennessee. They thank you. I thank you. The Garza Law Firm, just a huge part of our community. Uh, find out more about Marcos and his team at GarzaLaw.com. All right. Let's welcome in the today's panel we have right over here. Well, we got the sports animal crew. Josh Ward right there, Will West right there. And then we got the longtime sports source crew right here, Chuck Cavalier's Bob Hodge. Gentlemen, thanks for being here. You know, uh, we started in 2003, so it's about to be 2024. It'll be 21 years since we first launched this and thing. And we haven't aged today. Year. Yeah. But it's yeah. really our 22nd year we'll wow. be going into. So and haven't aged today. Haven't yeah, we? that's that's right, exactly. Uh, back then, I wasn't in the country music, Hall of Fame yet. So now I'm in. All right. Um, Let's just talk a little bit. Well, first, let me go ahead and put the poll up. Got to get you involved in this thing. And today's poll question, pretty simple. Tomorrow's Citrus Bowl is important to 2023 or a scrimmage for 2024? Important or a scrimmage? I got a uh, client I know is going to be clicking that. You, you play to win the game. I'm going to get that text. And I'm gonna <laughs> click. All you have to do is use your smartphone, get a snap of that uh, QR code right there, follow it weigh in on the poll. It's skewing hard toward its scrimmage for 2024. We'll see if it, if it stays that way. You can also go to sportsource.tv forward slash polls and take part there. All right. Citrus Bowl got a whole lot more interesting for Vol fans on Wednesday when Tennessee officially announced Joe Milton was opting out of the bowl and Nico Iamaliava would start. Let's just get underway. Josh Ward, your thoughts on the beginning of the Nico era at Tennessee. My prediction is the poll result will end up on the scrimmage for 2024 side because I think the attention in the middle of this past week quickly turned to let's see what Nico can do in this game to give us a better idea of how excited we should be for 2024. And this was a season where the offense did some good things at times. It was nowhere close to where it was in 2022 in terms of explosive ability and overall success. Nico is a player that has been pointed to over the last few months of when he takes over, the offense can go back to that. So the fans' chance to see him before this 23 season ends to start 2024 has um, it's provided life, I think, to this bowl game. Juice, more juice for the so, bowl game? I think it's now a reason to watch it with, with heightened interest. You know, I think everybody, Tennessee fans, are going to watch the ball game anyway. But, yes, it went from, okay, 1 o'clock, I'm going to watch Tennessee. Hey, hope they win to now it is appointment viewing. You're not going to miss this game, and Nico is going to be the story one way or the other. And I think that's how it changed it. It took it from a, yeah, Tennessee's in a bowl game to, man, this is an interesting bowl game. And a, a pretty good percentage of your fan base have been clamoring for this all along, right? That's what I heard. I even heard it before it was announced. That, you know, Joe Milton, thank you for what you've done. It's Nico's time. Let's get him. And then when it was announced, I think it revved it up, and I think – you might find Tennessee's players got a little pumped up with the change as well. 
I, I just want to see what Nico can actually do. That's the biggest thing that I want to see from this is, okay, I think he can get the ball out of his hands more quickly than Joe Milton. Yes. I don't know that he can get the ball up more out of his hands more quickly than Joe Milton. So I think you should be able to do more of what Josh Heupel has done in the past in his career. I don't know that that's the case. So what we get are definitive answers about, okay, what is Nico capable of doing at this point in his career? There you hit it. I think we're going to get definitive answers about where what he can do at this point. In this career, it will be taken as if it doesn't go well, it will be taken as that's all yeah. he's going to be. That's all he ever will be. Uh, and it's just important to remind folks that Peyton Manning's first start was against a good defense. Washington <laughs> State that year had a great defense. Tennessee won it on an end around Danilo Sylvan. I think it was 13 to 10 or something was the score. 10 to 9 maybe. But his first day, 7 of 14, no touchdowns, no interceptions, 120 yards passing. So nobody, well, actually they did because people booed him after that, but <laughs> nobody should have looked at that and said, well, I'm out on Peyton Manning. Hopefully, you know, if you look at Nico, I think he does get the ball out more quickly than Milton. I think he decides to run more quickly than Milton. But who are his receivers going to be tomorrow? That's another thing that if he's, if he's not throwing right. it quickly, could that be partially because there's nobody open downfield against a really good Iowa secondary? Let's talk about who's not going to be playing in this game. And we've got some pretty – Amazing numbers here. Tennessee's going to be without 19 players. You knew that. Iowa's without 10. A couple of those guys are backup quarterbacks who didn't play. Another one's an injured quarterback who's been gone for a while now. Uh, they really lost DeJean Cooper was there, or uh, Cooper DeJean <laughs> flipped it. Uh, he's their, one of the best players on defense, played about 900 snaps. But take a look at those total snaps there in terms of what you're missing. Tennessee will be missing 2,400 <laughs> offensive snaps. Tennessee will be missing 2,700 uh, defensive snaps, that's more than 5,000 snaps. They're missing more on offense or defense alone than Iowa is missing all told. Yeah. Wow. All right, now let's take a look and, and splash this forward into missing production. Let's just look at Wright, Small, and Milton. That's 4,600 yards exactly. That's 383 yards a game of production who won't be playing, and that's 26 touchdowns from this past year. <laughs> Hard for me to look at that and not think about Florida State, Ohio State, these teams that have te that have so many players opt out or transfer or yeah. hurt or whatever, they don't do well against teams that have most of their guys there. Iowa's got most of their guys there. In terms of Nico playing, that's the excitement. In terms of this is a scrimmage for 2024, I'm looking at that number, 5,100 versus 1,600 in terms of lost snaps. That's, that's an incredible difference. I, I look at it and I just wonder, can, can Iowa take advantage of the missing secondary pieces that Tennessee has? If it was a team that, uh, that could throw the forward pass that weren't, wasn't wearing leather helmets out there, I'd feel <laughs> a lot worse for Tennessee in this game. But I just think that's a really terrible offense. Anyone else would probably exploit that. I just don't know that I was good enough to be able to exploit those issues. And I also don't know, look, I don't know if Walter Payton could run the football against the Iowa team behind that Tennessee offensive line. Spragans might be as big of a loss as any of those if he does not play, I guess, there's the expectation right now. And so to me, that might be the biggest one because Tennessee's going to have trouble up front with that Iowa defensive line. See, I, I look at that, those numbers, and to me, that means Tennessee's kind of a hollowed-out team. Everybody's focused on, on Nico and everything. You, you don't – think in terms of what you lost until you look at those snap numbers. So what do you really go out there knowing what you have? And so, so to me, I'm sort of shocked that the, the line has came down towards Iowa. I'm stunned that it hadn't came down more towards Iowa because 5,000 snaps of experience gone – what was it, 4,300 yards? Yeah, 4,600 yeah. 4, yards. 4,600 yeah. yards of your offense gone? Hey, you know, I, I'm thinking I'm a big Samson fan. And, and Nico has looked fine in the limited, limited amount we've seen him. But that's your, that's your whole offense right there is, is gone. Dan, don't forget about Jalen Wright. I mean, how many times this year did we say he was the player of the game or the best player yeah. And he's not out there. Well, that's, I mean, that's a thousand yard rusher. Well, right not there. to mention the fact uh, Samson and Small both average, I think, five yards and five and a half yards per carry. Wright was more than seven yards per carry. That's a pretty big difference. Uh, so he was getting like, a, he was getting what Samson and, and uh, what Samson and Small got, and then another half carry on top of, <laughs> of that. Top yeah. Of that. Yeah. yeah. Every time he touched the ball. Josh, your thoughts on all the guys that are missing and making too much of it, or is that a huge concern? 
Uh, it's a real concern. It, it's a funny back and forth, though, especially on the defensive side to me, because you have young defensive backs, especially they're going to get tested, but then the test is against the team that you like them to get the first test yes. against, against Iowa. That <laughs> Best offense you could possibly put against. Yeah, it. so uh, that's also led to, I mean, we got some, some calls from Texas of, Oh, no. Are we going to allow Iowa to look like they have a Heisman <laughs> quarterback after their offense was so bad? So you can go back and forth, but, um, you know, Ricky Gibson at corner, we'll, we'll go through, mm-hmm. you know, the matchups and all that. But uh, it's not just Nico. Nico's the – he's the storyline going in, but Cam Seldon trying to replace Jalen Wright, Ricky Gibson trying to help replace Danico Slaughter, and, and before that, uh, Kamal Haddon, who was lost. So there's a lot of production that does have to be replaced on the defensive line. Tyler Barron. One of the best at creating pressure. They need somebody else to help do that. One of the things on offense, you know, we're going to get into this as well. Tennessee's been very good in the turnover differential this year, much better than Iowa has. Okay, well now, if Selden's going to be your number two back today, uh, tomorrow with, with Samson, Nico, Selden back there, that's a lot of freshman hands that aren't used to touching the ball this year. They're going to be touching the ball. Right. Yeah. So does your – we take care of the ball. We don't turn it over. Does that carry through, or is this going to be a new day? We saw Oklahoma's freshman quarterback get thrown to the Wolves against Arizona. Three picks, one fumble, four turnovers for the day, and that's a kid that's pretty well thought of. So, I mean, it'll be interesting to see uh, where this thing goes. But in terms of setting the stage, all eyes are on Nico. At the same time, I think more eyes should be on the fact that there's a lot of missing men around him. All right, when we come back, what's on the line for Josh Heupel? Hey, a lot of the guys are out. Nico's starting. Pressure's off Josh Eipel, right? This game's a scrimmage. Or is it? We'll discuss that next. Come on back on the Sports Source.